Well, they're the little tricks of the trade that supermarkets use to get you to open up your wallet. From putting the milk at the back of the shop to playing special theme music, it's all part of retailing's hard sell. Supermarkets are always going to try and trick us. We don't really use it, but because they're cheap, she'll get them. You may think you know the ploys supermarkets use to make you part from your dollars, like all those irresistible specials. The stalls at the end of the rows are always filled with the goodies, you know, seven for a dollar. And the good old fashioned placement of the milk. Always at the back, always in the furthest corner, always so far away. So that you've got to go all the way down there through everything else to get to it. But it's the clever strategies you don't know about that could cost you. The way the supermarkets typically are designed is first of all, that they want to prime us. World-renowned brand expert Martin Lindstrom has undertaken a $3 million study into consumer habits. Every second, every extra minute you spend in the retailer store is not to make you feel more comfortable or more happy, it is to make the money in your wallet go into the retailer's wallet. The research shows an average shopper will spend 25,413 hours of their life in a retail store. That's the equivalent of almost three years. Retailers know that the longer you spend inside their store, the more you will spend. So how do they do it? Well, Martin says it starts as soon as you walk through the door. This is all about making you buy as much as you can in this retail store. Take the size of trolleys. According to Martin, over the last 10 years, the standard ones have grown by 40%. We feel kind of obliged to use and buy more because the shopping cart is so big that we can't just buy one or two products, we have to fill it up. Sure, smaller trolleys have been introduced, but as we discovered, some supermarkets are making you deposit a coin to use them while the big ones are free. Next, Martin exposes the strategy behind the supermarket layout. The priming process is to make us feel that everything inside the supermarket is fresh. That's the reason why when you walk into cold, the first thing you'll meet is fresh flowers and is the vegetable department. Well, most of it is probably hit the nail right on the head. There's the fake wooden floorboards and the little market boxes, all designed to make you feel like you're buying straight from the grocer. It's a good ploy to get people into the mood to buy. Everyone likes fresh. Kath Armstrong from cheapskates.com.au says the effect is subliminal. Here you've got your fresh um, vegetables and fruits and they're laid out market style. They look all pretty, they look all fresh and crisp and inviting, really tempting. And they are, they're tempting you to pick them up. Martin claims the supermarkets even colour code their bananas and apples before putting them out. This is a very specific colour coding system. Then they know this is the time to put them into the retail store because at this area or this colour level, everyone will buy them. What's ironic is, there's nothing to do with how well it tastes or even how mature it is, it's only to do with perception. And while that shiny mist may make the produce look fresher, Martin claims it makes them rot faster. Mist them with water, they shouldn't do it. I refuse to buy vegetables and fruit from supermarkets that do that. And what's with all that ice inside the seafood cabinet? There's a reason why. In fact, they don't need to use crushed ice. It's much better to use it just in the fruit. But what we learned now is that crushed ice is a symbolic, which tells us things are even fresher than normal. Martin says there's a reason why milk and eggs are always on special, because it's the price of staples we remember. If they lower that price, we believe the entire retail store is cheaper. But here's the clangor. Martin says overseas supermarkets have introduced subtle bumps in the floor to make your trolley slow down in the aisles. As soon as their speed bumps, slow down. Well, we are now slowing down with our shopping trolley instead. And then we start to look around and we see all the great offers. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Um, I've never heard of that. What would you think if they brought something like that in? I'd be appalled. Mums are in too much of a rush to stop on vibrations. <laughs> and what about this? We all know supermarkets play certain music, but in other countries, retailers are using sound effects and smells to entice us to spend. Or you'll see that when you go into the butcher's department, they actually play the sound of a sizzling steak, which, by the way, is the third most powerful sound in the world in order to generate craving. So suddenly we feel craving. Picture this. You're walking down the soft drink aisle only to hear the sounds of your 
your favourite soft drink, pouring over ice in a glass. You then skip to the confectionery section where you're greeted by the sounds of children laughing, which means you can't help but buy a treat for the kids. The minds that come up with these um, marketing and merchandising ideas are absolutely brilliant. Wouldn't it be great if we could get them to work the other way and save us money? Wouldn't it be? And in statements today, both Woolworths and Coles told us they're not looking to implement those speed bumps or sound effects in their aisles. But Coles did admit it wasn't prepared to rule them out in the future. We will definitely keep you posted. Well, now, how's